Hello everyone, welcome back to the Adventures by George channel. Today I am in Frisco, Texas to go to the National Video Game Museum. And um, I'm really excited about this, so let's just, let's just get in there. So it looks like they're hours today. Today's a Saturday. They're open from 10 o'clock to eight o'clock. So when you come through those doors, you're gonna walk straight through past the Black Box Theater and then right into the National Video Game Museum, right straight ahead here. And the first thing I'm seeing when I get in here is this huge display of monitors with different uh, video game stuff on it. I honestly, I'm not sure how I feel about them uh, bronzing a Sega Genesis there or a Xbox. Well, I don't really care that much about the Xbox. Or, well, the ColecoVision I care about. They bronzed a 2600. How could they? And a 5200 too. That's criminal. And then this is the other side of it. What? A Lynx. They bronzed a Lynx? That'd break my heart if that was actually a working uh, Odyssey. All right, so when you first get in, you see this really cool statue thing. You got Mega Man here. You got Mario. Sonic and Mario are not actually fighting. That's pretty interesting. And you got Pac-Man, Donkey Kong. And uh, I think he's got some kind of... Hey, 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 dude, dude, get, 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 get up. Sorry. Wait a second. Wait a second. You look kind of familiar. Aren't you a little savage? A little bit. A little savage. Hey, dude knows about savages. Savage mister. That's me. Oh my gosh. I, mean, I drove here in a Prius, so, you know, <laughs> can't be too savage. <laughs> Get out of here. I don't want you hanging with me. Go away. Go away. I got video gaming to do. There's a working odyssey. What's that table tennis thing up there? That's not a specific TV just for playing TV tennis, is it? And you got video pinball by Atari. Man, I really want one of those. Ultra Pong. Telstar, Coleco Pong, an Odyssey 300, Olympian 2600. I wonder, <laughs> wonder if Atari borrowed the name for that one. I remember the stunt cycles. A friend of mine used to have a stunt cycle. We used to play that. That was pretty cool. And a tank, Telstar Combat. It's kind of interesting, all the different uh, early games that they came out with back then. You know, they had Pong originally and they didn't really know what else to do. Oh, speaking of Pong, there's an original Pong. I, I guess it's an original Pong. I don't know. It, it could could not be. It may, may be a recreation, but I doubt it. There's the original Atari logo right there. Now, this is a pretty interesting thing to me, is this is a puppy Pong, but it's actually signed by Al Alcorn, who is the developer of Pong. And it doesn't look like Nolan Bushnell, but that would make sense if it was. And this thing right here is extremely important in the history of video games. This is the brown box prototype by Ralph Baer. This is it, man. This is the one where he came up with video games. I call I call Ralph Baer the, he's really the father of video games. Nolan Bushnell is more like the godfather of video games because he, he actually, uh, you know, made it, made money with it. Whereas Ralph Baer actually came up with the idea. And this is a computer space arcade unit, which is pretty cool because this is actually the first arcade system by Nolan Bushnell. And uh, it was by Nutting Associates. And it's not even, doesn't have any circuitry to it. It's just a bunch of little lights on the screen to make it look like a video game. But you may remember that this arcade system was featured in the movie called Soylent Green but it was a white version of this. Did not sell very well. It was not very popular, so that's when uh, Bushnell decided to go back to the drawing board and create Pong. Speaking of Pong, there's a giant Pong screen right there. Oh, I'm gonna play some giant Pong here. Wait, where am I? Oh, I already lost. Wait a second. You gotta hit the button. Oh, uh, I lost again. That's what I'm good at. I'm good at losing. Oh, uh, geez. You're not even trying. Ah, it's hard to do when you're trying to look at the screen. But uh, yeah, look at the size of this giant. What is this? It's a giant wheel here. So along the wall, there's this huge, huge display of pretty much every really big known, well-known classic video game system ever, all the way up to the, uh, the PlayStation 3 and the Wii. Of course, you got Dreamcast up there, Nintendo 64, Sega Saturn, there's a, but there's an Atari 2600, and an Intellivision, and an Intex Adventure Vision. Those are very rare, actually, if you can get one of those. This looks like a baby's toy. I think uh, I think the video, angry video game nerd loves this thing. That's one of his favorites, yeah. Because look at the way the cartridges, the cartridges actually mount to the top like that, yeah. I think that's pretty cool. 
And it has a gun. I found the Jaguar on the wall. So this place ain't that bad after all. Then on the wall, of course, I got a monitor screen here with a giant Super Nintendo controller here. But these buttons don't do anything. Select, back. So, uh oh, it just did something. Let's see if we can find anything cool here. Where is it? Oh, they got Virtual Boy. They got Virtual Boy. Up, 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 up. There we go. Select. That's the one we want. Ah, the Atari 2600. Greatest system of all time. Only 249 bucks. So along the wall, you got PlayStation 2, 7800. There's a Sega Genesis back over there. Xbox, uh, Nintendo Top Loader, PlayStation, Nintendo 64, TurboGrafx-16, Super Nintendo, and the Sega Master System. Shut up, dog. Then on the wall over here, you got a collection of uh, board games based on video games. Oh, I saw this was funny. I, I don't remember a whole lot of these. I do remember the, where is the Donkey Kong one? I remember they had a Donkey Kong board game, but I don't see it. I'm not seeing it here, but hey, they got a Ghouls and Ghosts. I remember this Pac-Man. I don't know, they always kind of look kind of evil to me. Like they were like, like dangerous Pac-Man with its sharp teeth. Then there's the actual box for the board game there. Then there was the Legend of Zelda board game. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the market is for these games. Why would you have a board game when you could just get the actual game at home? I don't know. You got a Nintendo, just just play the real uh, Legend of Zelda. I said it's if your TV breaks. If your TV breaks. <laughs> that 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 could be it. <laughs> Mom, my TV broke or my game broke. Get me the Pac-Man game. I'm so addicked I got to have Pac-Man now. I need the board, B O R E E game. Cuz I'm bored. And that is a very rare RDI Halcyon Laserdisc game system. It wasn't very popular. And this is a Nintendo World Championship cartridge. Extremely rare. And then here's some uh, Atari 2600 boxes, Dukes of Hazzard. That game never came out. Crazy Climber, that came out. Crawl, I have Crawl, but not in this, not with that uh, artwork. It's much different. Atari Cube, have that, but I don't have box. Kangaroo. One of my favorite games of all time. I love Kangaroo. Superman 3 did not come out. It's not an actual game. It never was released. But Atari did the animated sequence that's in the movie. So that's pretty cool that they had that. Dig Dug and Locomotion, another game that never came out. So if you played Star Voyager for the Atari 2600, you've probably seen this artwork, this spaceship that's on the actual box itself. Well, there it is. There's the actual spaceship right there check that out that's so cool it's right there on the box and it's right there in real life and here's a nintendo virtual boy world-class service <laughs> super nintendo tester everybody's got to have one of those in their collection for sure it's just kind of cool this is a, a nintendo hand grabber thingy me bob uh, this is before Nintendo really got into making video games. They, they got into toys there for a while called the Ultra Hand. It's one of their more better selling toys back then. This is cool. This is a Sega Neptune prototype. This is a Sega Genesis with a built-in 32X in it. I'm sure this is just the case. It's probably, it probably doesn't actually work. It's the rare, it's the valuable. It's the Hello Kitty Dreamcast. Actually, I don't know how valuable it is. I just thought it looked cool. Revenge of the Jedi. Game one and two, which this is the Ewok game, the Java's Palace Sarlacc Pit game. I don't think I've ever played that one before. Sky Skipper, Incredible Hulk, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars Jedi Arena. Here's a couple of melted <laughs> systems, of Television 2. Oh, that's a system changer, so you can play 2600 games on it. Slightly melted. I don't know what happened to these guys. Check this out the Turbo Express. And I wish I'd have gotten one of those back in the day. I like this Miss Pac-Man clear. Kind of gives you an idea of what to expect inside a system like this, which there's not a whole lot in there. It's just, you know, you just got a monitor and a marquee and a controller. And it's mostly empty. It just takes up a lot of space. The Atari home computer kiosk. Check this out. An Atari 800 computer. I've got that inside basic book at home. I love this thing. I want to take it home. It just won't fit in my bag. And then here's a giant mural made out of Rubik's Cube pieces. 
of Keith Robinson, who is the founder, creator, inventor of the Intellivision. And over here on the wall, I thought these were just paintings of some kind, but apparently these are actual t-shirts. Check these out. Oh man, I need this shirt. I gotta get this shirt. Where can I get this? Here's a display of different versions of Frogger. Here's a Sega CD developers system. It's kind of cool with all the little switches and stuff on the front. And then down here, you got a bunch of uh, tools of the trade for uh, Game Boy. I, I assume these are also developer kits and developer tools that they use to make the games with. And same thing with the uh, Nintendo 64. That's gotta be a flash cart. You probably put any kind of game on there. Who knows what game's on there? This is a very meaningful system for me. It's the Atari Lynx, another development kit. Wish I could get in there and see the circuit board though. Some more developer boards, one for the Comavid. This is one I'm not all that familiar with. Here's elevator action. This game was never released for the 2600. There is a, a prototype of it. Duke Nukem Forever for the 2600 Halo. This actually was a legit finished game by Ed Fries, the guy who was the, uh, I believe he was the developer of the Xbox. So he created the Xbox. And some of these uh, Nintendo unlicensed <laughs> adult games, yeah. And over here on the wall is a plethora of controllers. Plethora, I like to say plethora, but there's a lot of, a lot of different and unique controllers here on the wall. It's the power glove. It's so bad. Right, Sam? I guess. I don't know. Good or bad. I've never had one. Check out all these classic handheld games. Remember the uh, the football game? You got Defender, Tutankham. I didn't know they came out with a Tutankham portable game. Fraser Climber, I've seen. Tron. It's awesome. Wildfire. Remember that? That was a pinball game. It's more of the handheld games I don't remember. Although I love this Zaxxon. This is a sweet Zaxxon, man. And then here's a lot of the original Coleco home versions that they had. This is what you want. These, the Game & Watches by Nintendo. I had, which one did I have? I had this one right here, lost it. I also had the other uh, Donkey Kong Jr. It was a flip up one, but I don't, I don't see it here anywhere. Don't see it anywhere. And some more Game & Watches here. So cool. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention the Atari Lynx. I have this exact same box, probably the exact same price on the uh, on the sticker there. It's the bargain. This is what it looked like back in the day. Hey, just get whatever game you want. You want some games there, Sam? <laughs> oh, ET? You don't like ET? How can you not like ET? It's great. You know what's funny? Because we're, we're, we actually had ET, and I didn't understand it forever. And then one day, it clicked, and I was like, I went from this is the worst piece of crap ever put in plastic to why does everybody hate this game? This is fun. Seriously. That yeah. Well, and the programmer, it took him five weeks. It only took him five weeks to make this game. Wow. So that was like a Herculean task to make a game in five weeks. But this is cool. Have you ever seen one of these before? This is a an Atari video game kiosk that you would have seen like in Kmart back in the day. This is so cool. I'm surprised you don't have one of these in your game room. I don't, I know. I, it wouldn't fit in my game room. I need one though. Yeah, let's let's roll this thing out of here. And then we got a Commodore 64 here playing Gorf. We've got a TI 994A playing Munchman or Taxman or something. I don't know. Then you got a TRS 80 here playing uh, Basic. I think. And then some scallywag varmint has created a little program that says subscribe to Craig's Game Room on YouTube here. Wonder who that could have been. Then you got an Apple II right over here. And of course the Atari 800 computer playing Pac-Man. Here's an Amiga computer playing, I think that's Strider 2. And then here's an IBM PC playing Oregon Trail. Don't die of dysentery. To my buddy Les, does this bring back any memories? Do you remember playing Dragon's Lair on this thing? The Coleco Atom computer? The strange thing about this system is that the power supply is in the printer. So if you don't have the printer, you're screwed. You can't even, you can't even turn this thing on. You gotta have the printer. Dumb. Oh my God. It's an Atari 7800 keyboard. Check this out. This was never released. It's one of the coolest things ever. I literally gasped when I saw this just a moment ago. 
And then over here next to that 7800 keyboard is the Compumate keyboard for the Atari 2600. This is so cool. It's the Atari Mind Link controller. If you strap this to your head, you could play Breakout even worse than if you were playing it with the actual paddles. And there's a Dragon's Lair arcade unit right next to a bunch of Dragon's Lair stuff right here. We're gonna go back into the Dragon's Lair itself. There's Daphne. This is the women's bathroom. There's there's Dirk, Dirk the Daring. I'm gonna go in here. Somebody really likes Cheetah Man and uh, the Action 52. I guess it takes all kinds, huh? Action 52, one of the worst games ever. E.T. is a masterpiece compared to Action 52 and the Cheetah Man games. Somebody really loves Donkey Kong Country too. They've got an entire display of just Donkey Kong Country stuff. Is Donkey Kong Country savage enough for you to play? Yes. I'm not so good at it anymore, but I used to love this thing. I'm Look at what I found. It's a Sequest, some kind of media thing. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm wearing my Sequest hat today. Somebody spent a lot of time collecting all these patches for all the different Activision games. These are pretty tough to get. You need that one? What, which one is it? I've never gotten any patches, but Chicken Run. It's kind of like, if I remember, it's kind of like a Frogger, right? You mean um, it's a Freeway. Oh, is it called Freeway? It's called Freeway, but you're a I chicken and you're trying to get across the road. Yeah, chicken. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Okay, so how do you get a patch? You would, on the screen show? what you would do is you would actually take a photograph of your your L, your your TV, <laughs> which would have been the big tube TVs, and you would you would send it to Activision, and then six weeks later, they'd send you a patch. I never knew that was a thing. That's pretty cool. And this is like a total 80s bedroom, isn't it? Of course, in Florida, we probably would have had Dolphins stuff, not Cowboys, but... Uh, yeah, you got uh, Nintendo over here in the corner. Definitely would be playing that for sure. And then over here, we've got the 70s, like the 70s living room here. They're playing in television. They should be playing Atari, but you know, I'll, I'll forgive it because it's 70s. It's awesome. Check out that VCR up there on top of the TV. I'm surprised that TV can actually support that VCR. It's probably so heavy. Let me play this thing. Is this a controller? What am I doing here? What this? Now this one actually makes sense if you actually played it like this instead of trying to play it like this. Who came up with this controller? Look out. Look out. Look out for those meteors. They're not coming down fast enough for me though. I need, I need faster meteors. You know how hard this is to play with one hand? Jaguar kiosk. You believe they made this thing? Maybe even got the Jaguar CD in there. So cool. And here's a bunch of prototype games. Check that out. There's a Jaguar prototype game there. Commodore Vic 20. Virtual Racing, Batman Forever. Look at all these. Protos. Prototype 5200 games. Sega Genesis games. More Atari prototype games. I don't think I've ever actually seen a prototype game in real life. Uh-oh, somebody knocked over the Odyssey 2 prototype. How dare they? Oh, and that, that, that game's knocked over too. A lot of history and a lot of value in here. Here's Propeller Arena. Yes, Half-Life for the Dreamcast. All the protos that you could ever want. There's a giant E.T. and a Galaga ship up there. It's awesome. I know people love E.T. That's why they put a giant E.T. up there. That's why they put him way up there where people are likely not going to see the guy. <laughs> but he's supposed to hide anyway, isn't he? He's hiding. Well, he's going back home. He's floating away. He's going, trying to get back home. And that ship is going to shoot him as he tries to escape. <laughs> All right, well, I don't know if I saw everything in here. There's like a million things, but I think I hit the highlights. This guy is still looking for like the Savage game. Do they have a Six Flags game? Uh, no. They don't. I'm aware of. They should be one. They should have a bald headed fat guy riding around. <laughs> they probably, you know what though? They, they probably do have a Mr. Clean game. Oh my I always call you Mr. Clean. Hmm. Please make sure you check out Savage Mister's channel. He does a lot of Six Flags videos. They're really good. And he did this huge tour. He came down to Florida and he avoided me the whole time. I don't know why. But anyway, thank you all for watching. Check out his channel. Take care, everybody. We'll see you again soon. Bye bye. Yo, stay savage. Stay savage. <laughs> Adventures in you. Waka, waka, waka. Definitely a Pac Man inspired wall here.